I get a lot of people on consults asking me if they should take metformin for their PCOS. Now, I am not a medical doctor. I cannot advise anyone to take or not to take any pharmaceutical. But what I want to do in this video is just show you what metformin does with PCOS and fertility so that you can make a decision that you feel really good about. I find that there is a need for a lot more education about what these fertility drugs are actually doing, how they work with your cycle and with your hormones. Okay, so metformin is a medication formulated to help diabetes. It is a diabetes drug. It's not actually a fertility drug, but it's sometimes used off-label for PCOS. So that is your first clue there. If your doctor is talking about metformin for your PCOS, they are very likely seeing signs of blood sugar problems either in your labs or just when they're talking with you, they're seeing like this is something that we need to work on for them. So improving your blood sugar is going to be key to resolving your PCOS. And that just, it goes hand in hand. If metformin is on the table for you, blood sugar work needs to be on the table as well. So how this works is metformin basically works by preventing your liver from mobilizing stored sugar and it increases the cell sensitivity to sugar in your peripheral tissue, so like in your, in your muscles, in your organs. So it deals with insulin resistance specifically. So the reason this is important is about 70% of women with PCOS have it because of insulin resistant and insulin resistance and its effect on your sex hormones. So everything in our body is connected. All of our hormones are integrated together. And insulin is a hormone. And so if you have insulin resistance, that is going to affect your other hormones, including the ones that you need to ovulate. Okay, so let's take a look at how this scenario plays out since this um, insulin resistance is such a big factor for so many women with PCOS. So I'm gonna pull up some pictures. <laughs> so let's work backward. Okay, so the result in this cascade of events is that you have PCOS, right? We know this is what's going on. Now, the backbone characteristic of PCOS is high androgens, these male sex hormones. This is the primary issue causing you to not ovulate, to grow chin hair, to grow back hair. All of that is coming from these really high androgens. So we know that testosterone, one of the factors in um, in excess, when you have excess testosterone production, um, this is because of insulin resistance in the body. So they've done some studies um, and they've found that when you have insulin resistance, you have a much, much higher chance of having this overproduction of testosterone. So one of the factors in developing insulin resistance is simply having too much insulin in the blood for too long. It's very simple. So hormones are messengers. Their job is to communicate. They, um, ba they basically take messages from your brain and give the message to the rest of your body. That's really what hormones are doing. And so it's kind of like uh, when you're developing resistance, it's kind of like if you have a kid brother saying your name over and over and over. They're like, hey, hey, hey. They're trying to get your attention. They're just constantly badgering you. Eventually, you tune them out. You become resistant to their message, right? You respond to them less. You're actively ignoring them. So this is what's going on when we have way too much insulin, so high quantity, over a long period of time, like every day, all day for years, you're getting insulin resistance. So why is there too much insulin in the blood for too long? So it's really because of the way we've been taught to eat, right? Most of us grew up eating tons of sugar, mostly refined carbs, and that, that's like all the stuff that you think of, the um, cupcakes and cakes, but it's also crackers, whole grain bread, I mean, all of that. You know, we eat that stuff all the time. So this is kind of the cascade of events for a large portion of women who have PCOS. This is how this um, 
hormonal cascade is creating the condition of PCOS. So what metformin does is comes in and works on the insulin resistance specifically, right? So it prevents your liver from mobilizing stored sugar so you're not getting um, higher blood sugar and it increases your cell sensitivity, right? So that you become insulin sensitive in the peripheral muscles. And in women who respond really well to metformin, that stops the hormonal cascade that ends in PCOS. So that sounds awesome, right? So the problem is the root cause of why you have insulin resistance in the first place is still there, right? And so the reason I wanted to do this video is because when I'm talking with women, they are basically told that metformin will fix their PCOS, right? I mean, it's a very short conversation. Doctors have like 15 minutes to talk to us. Um, and so it's, it's not totally their fault. Like we have to go and do the research to understand how these suggestions are fitting into what's going on in the body. Um, but we're basically told you have PCOS, take metformin, you're done. And so I wanted to do this video to show you what exactly is happening inside the body and where metformin comes in so that you can make better decisions, right? And since the root cause, the diet part, the high insulin was never addressed, you are, um, you're going to, you're going to keep having this cascade of events if you ever come off of metformin right? And that is the part that most women are not told. And that's the part that's really important because if you are, if you're having insulin resistance, this is a, an issue. This blood sugar problem has been going on for a very long time. And so doing a round of metformin for a couple of months is not going to permanently solve the problem. And that's the key part that a lot of people don't know. And so since that root cause of the diet side was never addressed, you're gonna keep developing everything else, the nutrient deficiencies, you're gonna keep getting um, the digestive problems, bloating, stomach pains, irregular bowel movements. Um, since your spouse is probably eating the same way that you eat, they're likely having health issues and you're still passing on your habits and your food beliefs to your children when you do have them. And that is all part of really working on that root cause that's creating this cascade of events. So if you watched my video last week, it was talking about a study done um, about the genetics of PCOS, and we find that there is a genetic component. And so, the women who are watching this video, you are very likely watching this because I also work with fertility and you're trying to conceive. And so this is really important just to know for your daughter's health, right? So that they don't have to go through the same thing that you have been going through for all of these years. The problem that I have with medications like metformin is that it perpetuates the belief that something is wrong with your body right? It says your body isn't doing what it's supposed to, so we're just going to go in on a chemical level and change your body's biochemistry because it's not doing what it's supposed to do. But what if, just have an open mind, what if insulin resistance is actually a perfectly normal response to an overconsumption of sugar and processed foods? Insulin resistance is how animals put on weight for the winter, right? So isn't that a 100% completely normal and necessary response that all mammals have? So what if the problem isn't your body? What if the problem is actually your environment? What if your environment has created basically a perpetual harvest season and so winter never comes, right? And so this mechanism that we and all mammals have to put on weight when there is excess is never counterbalanced by just the natural seasons of how our bodies evolved to work, right? And so if winter never comes, of course you're insulin resistant. Of course you're gaining weight. Of course you're having menstrual cycle changes, right? 
but it doesn't mean that something is wrong with you. It means that you're in the wrong habitat. That's all. And you have 100% control of your habitat. And that is an amazing thing because we are not just mammals, we are humans. <laughs> so the other amazing thing is that you get to decide how you want to address your PCOS, right? So my job is just to give you some information so that you can be confident in the decision that you make. Some women decide to use metformin or fertility drugs, and that is awesome. Some women decide to do nutritional therapy, and that is awesome. Some women decide to do both, and that is awesome. It is 100% your decision. And the other thing I see in consults and talking with women is that we have given the decision to other people. We are waiting for other people to make the decisions for us instead of going out and finding the information that we need so that we can make a decision that we feel really confident about, right? So my job is just to help you make decisions. <laughs> All right, so I hope that this was helpful. If you do want to manage your PCOS just holistically um, from this root cause perspective of really getting into why PCOS has manifested in your life, why you were having fertility problems, then you can um, reach out to me here on Facebook or find me over at parsleyandpumpkins.com. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button below and consider subscribing to my channel for a new video every single Monday. Next week, we are going to talk about what to do if you have polycystic ovaries, but not PCOS. So stay tuned and I'll talk to you soon.